Good morning and welcome to this special meeting of the Orlando City Council today at 10 o'clock, May 18th, 2015. We're going to begin with the invocation, which today will be offered by Reverend Brenda Loyal, Interim Pastor for College Park Presbyterian Church located in District 3. Reverend Loyal brings more than 22 years of experience as a Presbyterian pastor. She is a PhD candidate in leadership at Capella University, has a Master's of Divinity degree from Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary, and a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from Indiana University Bloomington. You may stand or remain seated during the invocation. The pledge will be led by Commissioner Sheehan afterwards. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Clerk, this is a special meeting today to consider items on the consent agenda that were previously scheduled for our regular meeting time of 2 o'clock today. Um, and that meeting has been canceled. All the proposed ordinances which were previously scheduled for consideration at this afternoon's regular meeting will be rescheduled for our next meeting on June the 15th. Staff will make sure that all the proposed ordinances are properly re-advertised for the public hearing on that date. Madam Clerk, let's see. How about consideration of the minutes Some from the move. workshop, agenda review, and Second. city council meetings of May 4th. Motion by Commissioner Ng. Second. Second by Commissioner Sheehan. Beat you to the punch. Uh, yeah. Always does. <laughs> All in favor indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, uh, we're, we don't have presentations today, so we're right into the mayor's update. Uh, I want to congratulate Commissioner Sheehan on being recognized by the LGBT Community Center of Central Florida and the Harvey Milk Foundation with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast last week. Commissioner, you truly deserve this recognition, and I know it came as a surprise, so congratulations. <laughs> May is Historic Preservation Month. At the last council meeting, we presented our Historic Preservation awards and we are initiating some a new plaque program so tomorrow at 2:45 p.m i'll join commissioner sheehan in unveiling a florida historic historic marker at the epshine plot at the greenwood cemetery to mark the plot of two of orlando's earliest civic-minded families who are also descendants of thomas jefferson hence the reason we have a jefferson um, street in Orlando and then next Thursday at 1030 I'll join Commissioner Hill to unveil a historic plaque at the Wells Built Hotel this is one of over two dozen plaques that we're installing around downtown to recognize our local landmarks uh, neighborhood watch and national night out we continue to hold public safety as uh, the most important thing that we do our neighborhood watch program is a great example of partnerships with our residents that have led to reductions in crime so every year we celebrate neighborhood watch with 
National Night Out in August, so we'll talk more about that as we get closer. But OPD is hosting several crime prevention training classes and neighborhood kickoff events starting this month, including a women's self-defense class at several of our community centers, a senior safety summit, and a Hispanic safety summit. You can learn more about that at City of Orlando. Dot net items on the agenda just quickly uh, items to further our newest uh, fire station getting it underway station two in our historic Paramore neighborhood I'll be working with closely with Commissioner Hill to make sure that is a state-of-the-art station like all the others that we've built and lead certified uh, one of the cool things that has been flying under the radar screen is today we will vote to accept a $1.7 million grant from the Corporation for National and Community Services <coughs> to participate in the Operation AmeriCorps program. And we are one of only six cities in the country that is getting this grant and the only city in the Southeast United States. And it's gonna allow us to launch a program that will hire 65 full-time AmeriCorps members who work directly with high school juniors and seniors mm -hmm in our lowest income schools and they will provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring for more than 2,000 students and support our other efforts to ensure success. Um, I can't wait to uh, have the official announcement on this. This is really cool to build up our kids and get them ready for whatever comes after graduation, whether it's college or work or internships or what may come, or the Marines maybe. Commissioner? <laughs> Okay, and we have two items on the agenda <clears throat> that could bring as many as 135 high quality jobs to our city. The first is a resolution to export, ex support the expansion of La Chiquita, a family owned and operated tortilla manufacturer with its first location in Atlanta. The company takes great pride in creating the highest quality tortilla products and services many of the national chain restaurants. Due to their growth, they are considering District 6 Commissioner Ings in the city as a location for the establishment of a second state-of-the-art tortilla manufacturing facility. If they choose Orlando, the company will create 110 new high-wage jobs between now and 2020. I'd like to recognize Matt and Adam Oliario, who are here with us today. Please stand up. And thank you for considering Orlando for your expansion. The second is a business assistance program agreement for Spectrum Sports Performance, which is a leader in sports performance training of athletes. They are planning to create 25 new full-time jobs and investing more than a half million dollars in a 17,000 square foot building renovation. And I would like to thank Dan Shuck with Spectrum Sports, who is here today. Thank you for investing in our, our city, Dan. Okay, and that's all I have. So we'll move on to the consent agenda. And the consent agenda is a number of items that are acted on through a single vote of council. I give each of the commissioners an opportunity to comment on items on the consent agenda or update you on items of significance from their individual districts. We rotate the order we do that. And Commissioner Sheehan is first today. Well, thank you, Mayor Dyer. And a shout out to Commissioner Stewart's district. The Fringe Festival is running through next weekend, and it's wonderful. I was there all weekend, and it's just a great festival, lots of new people coming, and uh, we, it's really in our own backyard that we have this wonderful Fringe Festival. It's one of the largest in the world, and uh, if you get a chance to check it out, please do. On the agenda today, item B6, Columbia Street Improvements. Uh, these are added to the slide project, one general travel lane each direction, a left turn queue, and on-street parking. This is all part of neighborhood improvement in uh, the orange area, so downtown south area, so glad to see that happening. On item B7, I love that we're increasing the budget to reline the old and deteriorating storm pipe. This is not sexy, but definitely necessary from $94,000 to $800,000. This can extend the life of the uh, storm pipe underneath our streets for up to 50 years. So it's a great investment in our infrastructure. Um, on item B9, peace of mind demolition of the round building. I know everybody's tired of looking at that hole across the street with the water in it. We're rewarding this to a new demolition contractor and hopefully we'll be able to get that cleaned up over there but I don't think anybody anticipated the amount of concrete steel rebar and everything else that was in there so hopefully we'll get that down soon and uh, finally item I1 the Colonial Drive overpass I'm very excited to see 
us linking all of our trails, Dinky Line, Gertrude's Walk, together through a trail system that goes all the way through downtown. And as someone who likes to, who uses our urban trail every single day, I'm delighted to be able to, to take advantage of this amenity myself, Mayor. So that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 5. Commissioner Hill. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Council and you also, Mayor, uh, for a monumental uh, 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 press conference on Friday where the city of Orlando has banned the box. And we're the only the fourth city in Florida to have done that. And I think, don't quote me, I think that there's only three uh, uh, states in the nation that quite has done that. And being the progressive city that we are, I, I, applaud, I applaud you. Uh, so many people I've been reading all over the media and on social media um, how much this decision has impacted many people and has given them hope because I myself, like many, that box intimidate people. It makes them feel as if they go and apply, they already don't have a chance. That application many times is put aside. Um, and now I, I do know there will still be background checks, but it has equalized the opinion field where people will now come to City Hall and say, you know what, let me tell you my story. Just because that box is there doesn't mean that there's not a person with a story. i like to thank uh, Patricia Newton, Byron Brooks, Patricia Garrard and also my Youth Advisory Committee and Faith in Florida and many uh, other uh, uh, grassroots organizations that has done the research on this and all came together uh, to make this happen. Also here, in, uh, we had another monumental event in District 5. Commissioner Sheehan, you might be uh, proud of. We're following in your footsteps. Uh, on May 6th, uh, we had our first painting of utility cabinets <laughs> there at Rock Lake Elementary and many more to come there in the District 5 area. And the the uh, student council there at Rock Lake Elementary were the ones that helped design and paint the box. I must give Charles Randack, Jer Jeremy Crow, Susan Harris, and Cindy Light, Jabril Lali, and also uh, Tom Rosenberry. Uh, a big thank you. They really, really helped uh, 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 steer, steer this project. For the last year, we've been working on it, and it was a, a great success. It was, rain, it was a rainy day, but nevertheless, we prevailed. And Jones High students came back and completed it. So thank you all for those that were involved in that. I'd like to uh, also congratulate you, Commissioner Sheehan, on your uh, award there from the Harvey Milk uh, Foundation. You are a pioneer, you uh, are a fighter. You also have been a great mentor to me here on council, and I thank you for your service. Uh, girl power. <laughs> <laughs> there is another great event that happened here in District 5. Uh, we had myself and the mayor hosted a uh, spring uh, 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 sustainability workshop there at Rock Lake Elementary uh, Community Center uh, last week. And uh, commissioners, we had the highest attendance throughout the uh, districts. So uh, I think we had about 76 uh, participants, but it overflowed into almost 100. Uh, thank you, OUC, Greenworks, and SELF for providing the information and resources. And many of our residents took home uh, trees and plants um, to place in their yards. And they're really, really excited about the tree canopy and becoming involved uh, to make uh, District 5 the greenest district in the city. Went over with Orlando Magic to Magnolia School Spring Concert. And Magnolia School is where you have many children with multiple disabilities and challenges. But to see those kids singing and playing instruments uh, and overcoming many of the challenges they have through their musical talents, it, was, it brought tears to my eyes to see uh, kids with cerebral palsy 
actually playing instruments. Sometimes we can't uh, judge a book by its cover. We all have many talents uh, that's laid uh, dormant inside of us, if only we believe. And there was a scholarship given that day, I think of $10,000 for more instruments for the kids there at Magnolia School. So thank you, OCPS, for the invitation to come out and be a part of that. I'd like to thank uh, Jessica from out of Commissioner Stewart's office and Cal out of the clerk office. They gave uh, kids from out of my district at a charter school, Victory Christian Academy, uh, an opportunity to come here and tour City Hall and uh, expose them to the workings of city government. They were able to come and sit on the dais and take pictures and, and see themselves where they want to be. And it was very impactful. They did a tour downtown and to see uh, these kids in their beautiful uh, private school jackets and, and just with their heads held high and for the people of downtown to see these, and I'm gonna say it for lack of better words, these young inner city black kids in a dignified manner, oftentimes we're stereotyped by what we see on the news. Um, I saw where there were comments throughout, because I am a, a person that follows social media, where the people were saying they saw these kids and they would look at them in the eyes and immediately they said hello. That's powerful. That's powerful. And uh, so thank you, Victor Academy, for all that you're doing to make District 5 a, a better uh, uh, district and also grooming future leaders here in the city of Orlando. And that's all I have for uh, this session. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. We'll move to District 6. Commissioner Ings. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Um, I'd also like to say congratulations, too, to the um, Latino Enterprises, DBA, La Chiquita Tortilla Manufacturer. Uh, did I pronounce that correctly? I did very well. Did I do okay, Commissioner Ortiz? <laughs> Are you awake down there? Yeah, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you guys so very much. Uh, creating 110 jobs uh, coming into the area uh, by December 2020 makes a whole lot of difference in the world. Uh, and especially for our economy and, uh, and really having your business here in Orlando. So I really appreciate you guys coming in and thank you so much uh, for your effort. So I do support wholeheartedly item C11. And then also to, um, I have a town hall meeting and Ed, am I holding this up? Okay, uh, town hall meeting. And this reference a discussion on police and body cameras uh, our panelists are going to be Orlando Police Chief John Mina, Orange County Sheriff Jerry Dimmons, uh, State uh, Public Defender Robert Wesley, and the Ninth Judicial Circuit State Attorney Jeff Ashton. And Ms. Monica May of, of uh, Star 94.5 will be our moderator. This event will be held on Wednesday, May 20th. Uh, 2015 at 6 p.m. at the Dr. James R. Smith Center at 1723 Bruton Boulevard in Orlando. A demonstration of the body camera use and function will be presented. Uh, how they affect the courts will also be discussed. Uh, so please join Commissioner Samuel B. Ings for an informative evening of discussion and dialogue to build great police and community relations. Also informing the community that your safety and treatment are paramount, very important uh, to us, and specifically those uh, in leadership position on, and on the uh, panel itself. So please come out and join us in this event. This is going to be a great event. Thank you in advance, Chief Mina. He did not hesitate to confirm his attendance on this. And I think this would be good. And, uh, and what led me to do this right away was because of Chief Mina's presentation to Orlando City Council uh, referenced the body cameras and the police uh, and our community. So this is very important to all of us. And Mayor, the last thing that I have, I just wanted to kind of cue you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that I have is that um, 
We're seeing a lot of new and different types of proposed development along International Drive, both within and immediately outside the city limits. Uh, many of these proposed structures are much higher than anything existing today. These projects and potential new projects will have a profound effect on the surrounding businesses and residents. There are issues of visual intrusion, architectural planning, safety concerns, and other issues. Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs has already convened a task force to study the land uses for the unincorporated portions of International Drive and Universal Boulevard and the Convention uh, Plaza District. I'm glad to see that our um, planning director, Dean Grandin, is participating in those meetings as the city representative. Mayor, I'm asking that we continue to have Mr. Grandin participate with the Orange County Group because of the potential for impact on many businesses and residents in the city. That you also authorize the city planning division to evaluate the impacts of such recommended changes in the zoning and comprehensive plan for the area as necessary to protect all stakeholders, particularly as it relates to height limitations and land uses. So if you would help me with that, I would certainly appreciate it. We'll take that under consideration, Commissioner. Thank you. And you know, Mayor, uh, one other thing reference that too, because right in the intersection of I drive in Kirkman Road, it is tight in there already. And uh, more traffic is what we really have to manage. And, and I think that would be something that we need to look at too as we protect our pedestrians along that way. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. And I think it may have been before you came on council, but Dean was, remember when somebody proposed a 70 story building out there? So, yeah, the sky is the limit. <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take that under consideration, Commissioner, but I think it is appropriate that we reevaluate both the traffic and the zoning and height limitations in that area. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Gray. Thank you, Mayor. Um, activities in District 1 are on my website. Uh, any questions or issues as you look at those, I'd be glad to deal with those. And my only comment is to echo what was said previous to our friends at Spectrum Sports as well as La Chiquita. Uh, we thank you for your consideration to come to the city. And I think we've got a history of demonstrating that we try to help our businesses grow and prosper. And we would love the opportunity for you to relocate here and, and set up shop. So with that, um, I support that on the agenda. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gray. Commissioner Ortiz, District 2. La Chiquita. <laughs> <laughs> Just mess with you. <laughs> congratulations, guys, and uh, congratulations, Commissioner Inks, because now you're going to have the Latin flavor on your oh, side. Wow. <laughs> hey, now, you know I have it in I Drive NASCAR, too, right? <laughs> congratulations. I think um, we're welcoming you with open arms because I know that it's going to be a very successful business. It's too bad you didn't come to District 2, but it's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll figure something out. <laughs> um, I have a special congratulations I have for a very, very special gentleman I met many, many years ago. His name is Santos Maldonado. He worked for Second Harvest and he invited me to his graduation at the age of 61 years of age. Um, he graduated from UCF, got oh, his bachelor's great. degree. And what is very important about this is that this guy was homeless for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So he's risen to, you know, to a whole new level. We're all very proud of him. Uh, I believe Channel 6 or Channel 9 uh, put up some sort of a, a story about him. So congratulations, Santos. I also want to congratulate uh, Dr. Deborah Robbins and Dr. Julio Iris from um, Sanford um, Burnham Institute. They did a great presentation um, this past, uh, what was it, uh, Friday? I believe it was Friday at the NEC. And, uh, the subject was biomedical research and what they're doing, so it was very uh, eye-opening and there's a lot of uh, studies being done for diabetes that I think more people need to be aware of. And last, let's say, Mayor, I was at last week, I was last week, I attended Stand Up Orlando, which is one of your initiatives, presentation about bullying, uh, 
technology and, and teen depression on, at the Englewood uh, Community Center. The keynote speaker was Mr. John Holligan, and he did a great presentation. I wish each and every one of us uh, had a chance to attend this presentation. He lost his child uh, as a, as a I guess as a result of bullying, and, and it was a very sad story, but at the same time, he was trying to send a message to all the parents out there because it's a current issue we're dealing with, and people are not paying enough attention to it. We need to get more involved from the parent standpoint, from the community as a whole, government. So um, congratulations to him and his, his endeavors in teaching others about this very serious issue. And uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And we'll move to District 3, Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. Let me just cover a couple of quick things. Um, uh, our, com our community is becoming such a neat um, um, haven for international influence. Uh, we won't meet again until after this, so I'll just mention it briefly, but on June 11th, the international president of Rotary will be coming to Orlando to start a new club called the Rotary Club of Orlando Dragons. It's a, ro a special Rotary Club designed to reach out to the Chinese community uh, that's continuing to grow in our community. It's really kind of a neat idea, and of course, the uh, current international president is from Taiwan, so it's the second time an international president will have vid visited Orlando, but it's also for a purpose that is just really unique and different, and I'm really thrilled about that. A couple things I want to share. First of all, um, uh, along the same lines, Memorial Day is coming up. I want to say take a special thanks to, uh, for our veterans. If you have your uh, iPhones with you now, take it out, take Monday, put 3 o'clock on, put an alarm on, and if you will, take a moment and pause for two minutes of silence uh, for those who have died uh, protecting our freedoms around the world. So please do that for Monday. Um, the um, graduation time is up. I have the opportunity uh, to uh, talk with the graduates of my alumni, Edgewater High School, this evening. Uh, but uh, uh, I ask all of our graduates to enjoy the graduation ceremony and to please be safe. Um, if you had a chance to go through the rotunda for the next week or so, there's a special project down there, an art project done by Lake Highland. Um, it's called the City Soup Project. They had all of their students uh, put together a tile, uh, three cans of soup of pop art. They're down there in the city rotunda. Please get a chance to look at that. Uh, there'll be eventually a permit display over at... Um, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, but they were part of the part of this partnership, the City of Orlando Boys and Girls Club and Lake Highland. Um, we had a reception last week about that. Um, but it's just really neat to see uh, schools reaching out uh, into the community. Some updates real quickly. Uh, these are all coming before our next meeting, so I'll just mention them briefly. The mummies are coming to the Orlando Science Center uh, on June 13th. The mummies of the world will exhibit, um, will debut. So please get a chance, go to osc.org or mummies of the world if you'd like, dot com if you want to know more information. Uh, Lou Gardens is uh, hosting their monthly story time on June 1st. It's a great time for those uh, family who are uh, coming into the summer months to get a chance to go over. And June 5th, we'll be having um, uh, our evening uh, movies over there, Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Part 1. And then, of course, um, uh, if you're looking for some camp options, don't forget about the Save Orlando Community Centers. Uh, there are also specialty camps for Pottery Studio, Skate Park, as well as Lou Gardens. On the agenda, real briefly, um, Dan, thank you for, for your commitment to District 3 and to the City of Orlando. We look forward to seeing you there. And then, of course, um, Chick, I'm going to... Say it. Go ahead, Chik say it. I was going to say Chiquita, but Chiquita. I, is that right? Chiquita? That's, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> is, that, is that close enough? I can roll my R's. I don't know what they mean, but I can roll my R's. Um, so we're looking forward to having you all here. So uh, please, uh, please join us. I think um, Commissioner Gray said it right. We are a city that wants to reach out to the business community, and thank you all for that. Uh, and as uh, Commissioner Sheehan has said, the Colonial... Um, pedestrian overpass is now moving forward. We have kind of always kind of talked about it, thought it was going to happen, and now we have evidence that it's going to move forward. I appreciate that and appreciate the work that our staff is doing in cooperation with FDOT. And of course the round building. I'll tell you, there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't stop me and ask me about the round building. Um, and um, so it is, we've, uh, uh, the, the details are in the, in the agenda, but basically uh, we're going to uh, that, that's going to be gone in 116 days, right? Mm -hmm. 116 days? <laughs> or sooner, is that right? 
Um, uh, and, uh, and Sheryl Crow will not have her piece of pop art, as she thought was modern art, as she said at the opening. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that was delayed, but uh, none of those reasons have to do with the city of Orlando. And so we're glad that we had a chance to help resolve this situation and done that at a case cost where it doesn't cost us any more money. So I appreciate that. Uh, Byron, congratulations to you and your staff for the work that you've done. And that's all that I have, Mayor. You know, the funny thing about that round building is is delayed and it's been an eyesore, but because of liquidated damages, we're actually going to come out $130,000 <laughs> ahead of the game. So I guess that's yeah. the only silver lining in that. Well, in, uh, in honor of Commissioner Gray, I'd like to go ahead and move the consent agenda. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second, second, second. second by Commissioner Ortiz. All in favor, indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so it is adopted. Okay, we have no ordinances today, so why don't we just, do we have any general appearance cards? Madam Clerk? No. Anybody want to speak? Nope. And without objection, we'll stand adjourned. Let's just have a